I've got a quick question for you. Do you subscribe to the show? If the answer is yes, then a huge high five for you. If the answer is no, then let me tell you why you should. Subscribing is free. It takes less than 20 seconds to enter your name and email on the website, or alternatively hit that little subscribe button on your podcast player. And most importantly, what it means is that each week without you having to remember to check, the new episode gets automatically sent directly to you. It is super easy. Now, if you're like me and you're passionate about learning and professional development, then don't even think about it. Just go right ahead and do it. Hit subscribe right now. Go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com or click on the subscribe button under Fitness Business Podcast on your phone's podcast player. Now, let's press play on this week's show. Welcome to the industry's leading business podcast for fitness owners and managers. This month's interviews are brought to you by our podcast partner, Precore. Through experience design, Precore delivers best-in-class products, top-ranked service, unparalleled expertise and resources needed to help facility operators win. To find out more, visit Precore.com or click on the link in today's show notes. A super warm welcome to all of you today. This week, I'm joined by Dory Nugent, the membership director at Club La Maison Health and Fitness Club. Dory is a 15-year fitness industry veteran. She started out as an instructor, then later became a group fitness director for two different privately owned health clubs. Dory currently serves on the board of directors for the Mid-Atlantic Club Management Association, and she's an educational presenter at URSA conferences. During this week's show, Dory talks to us about the dynamics of a well-functioning team, key behaviours of team members, which she segments as winners and warriors, ways of connecting with our team members, and our Fitbizpiration for today is three actions for a manager to improve employee engagement. We're about to hear this week's interview with Dory, but first, thank you to our podcast partner, Precore. Precore understands that experience matters when it comes to selecting the right fitness supplier for your facility. That's why they're celebrating their proven expertise in experience-driven design, the industry's highest resale value backed by top-tier US manufacturing, and the industry's highest-rated customer support team. Find out how Precore can provide you the total solution approach to fit your needs. Just go to precore.com forward slash total hyphen solutions. And now it's time for this week's show with Dory Nugent. Dory, a super warm welcome to you. Thanks for coming on the show today. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, you say that having a healthy team dynamic is key to business success. So talk us through the signs of a well-functioning team. Okay. First and foremost, for me is I genuinely believe that the team needs to care about one another. And when I say that is we, we do a uh, huddle every morning at my club. Uh, it's literally 15 minutes. Uh, each, each department head or team manager, we all meet and we just kind of go around quickly and we talk about our, what we're going to try to get done today. You know, our, our, we call them our golf balls. And, um, but be- before we start that, we usually just take a minute or two just to, you know, talk to each other about, hey, how was your weekend? Or, you know, hey, how, uh, your son was going to the prom? Or, hey, how was your mother's day? And, and the answer is like, we genuinely care. So we ask because we genuinely care. Mm-hmm. Second one is, I feel that you need to genuinely care about each other's department. Uh, you know, I, I want to be able to do whatever I can for personal training department. And I want to be able to do whatever I can for the group X department. And we don't compete against one another. We, we come together and we we try to work as a team to figure out, hey, how can we either cross market together and work together? Or what can we do just to, to bump up or to push up each other's department? Uh, the fourth thing for me is fun. Uh, the fitness industry, it's fun. And I know I'm a much better employee, much more productive employee when I'm in a good mood and I'm having fun and, you know, I'm laughing a little bit. I mean, getting my work done, but I'm, I'm having fun with everyone that I work with. And then uh, kind of just 
you need a team that when they do come together, they can genuinely get the job done. They can all strive together for the same goal, get it done quickly, efficiently, and uh, then move on. Now, we have to rewind a little bit, Dory, because when you were talking about huddle, did you say that you referred to the comments or the the goals as golf balls? Is that what you called them? Yes. (laughs) Okay, you need to explain (laughs) that concept to us. Because I don't know about everyone else, but I was going golf balls. How? Okay, okay. So the golf ball concept. Um, again, in our huddle, once a month, somebody has to be the huddle leader, and what that means is, again, it's very quick. It's a five. 10 minute max, maybe even about five minutes, you get to be in charge of either doing a motivational talk, you can hand something out, you know, maybe something you saw on the internet, you know, you, you think, oh, this is kind of cool, you know, I'll print this off and hand it out. Well, one time I saw, um, it was actually Jared Sirocco, which you know, I will yeah. give him I will give him the credit. He'll be so excited. Um, I saw him speak and he did this super cool um, piece on golf balls and it was in a glass jar. He filled it first with all these Skittles. And then at the very top, he tried to fit these four golf balls in, right? And then tried to put the lid on it and the lid didn't fit. And then he reversed it. He put the four golf balls in first and then he loaded in all the Skittles and magically the lid fit, right? Mm -hmm. And the the point of the concept was that throughout the day, the Skittles represented all of the little things that pull us in 20 different directions, right? The emails, the, hey, do you have a second? You know, the members that want to talk to you. And if we don't focus on our four golf balls. The little Skittles will absolutely consume your entire day. And at the end of the day, you'll never be able to knock off whether it's, you know, three or four of your golf balls. So we try to get our four bar- four golf balls or three golf balls off right off the bat. They're the most important things that are on our to-do list. And then after that, the Skittles can kind of layer themselves in. So we, we've we now, they've all coined the term of, okay, what are your three or four golf balls for the day? Because they all thought it was kind of fun, little magic trick. So Sorry, there you I'm go. So glad you explained that to <laughs> That is phenomenal. And, uh, you know, I always talk about having your mostly important tasks, you know, on your to-do list, because as soon as we overcrowd it, it gets overwhelming. That's so a huge shout out to Jared for, for that concept as well. I'm so, I love hearing about when, you know, we learn something from a conference or a convention, we go along and we use that information to help our teams. And that is such a a brilliant story, Dory. I'm glad that we went into it. Now, Well, you're so welcome. (laughs) So just coming back to this team dynamic that that we're talking about, because I know that you identify your team members um, in two different categories. You talk about having winners and having warriors. So I want to break those two areas down so that we can understand the difference between the two. So let's start off with winners. You say that you've got five key behaviors of a winner. Can you talk us through what those are? Yeah. So the winners, uh, and I want to make this clear that winners are great. There's nothing wrong with a winner. I mean, hey, who doesn't love a winner? You know, and, and every business you hope that you have a lot of winners, but I do classify winners and warriors a little bit differently. And my winners are the first point would be is that one, yeah, they're good at what they do. You know, there's no doubt um, that they're, 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 they're your rock stars. Second of all, they're, if you're looking in the terms of uh, Group X, they're packing their classes. They're full, right? So they're good at what they do, and now they're packing their classes. And they're dependable. You know, they're there. They're showing up, um, whether they're a Group X instructor or whether they're a personal trainer or a front desk attendant. They're dependable. However, my other two that I'm going to branch off is one, they're always, sometimes they're not so quick to go the extra mile, right? They're good at what they do, but that's it. They come in, they do their job and they leave and that's the end of it, period. And then the last one is I always sometimes say, sometimes the winners are minimalist, kind of goes along with the same thing. They come in, they do what they got to do. They do it well. Yes, they're there. Yes, they're dependable, but they're minimalist. So they're my five points for what I classify uh, when I look at winners versus warriors as winners. 
Excellent. Great rundown and a really good way for us to view those key behaviours of, of a winner. So let's now flip over to warriors. Talk us through the five key behaviours of a warrior. Yeah, so your warriors are, are you know, I'm going to take the first three of, of the winners. They're still good at what they do. They still are, um, you know, if they're, again, they're a group X instructor, they're packing their classes with their front desk attendee, you know, they're super social uh, with the members and they're dependable. For me, the, the five points for now a warrior that goes above and beyond a winner is one, they go the extra mile, right? They are number two, always willing to help. If you need them, they're right there for you to help. Yes, they are loyal, absolutely loyal. And they step up to the plate. Number four, they step up to the plate when you ask them to bat, right? I always say, you ask them to step up the plate and they'll, they're, they're swinging for the fences. You know, they, they want to do whatever they can for you. And lastly, a warrior, I will say, is somebody that I definitely want on my team. Okay, so are you saying that we should aim to have a an even mix of these two, the winners and the warriors? Like how should we be looking at the overall dynamics of within a team and how that, that split up? Okay, so the way that I, when I came up with this, again, this is my little own concept, and the way that I came up with it is I was uh, brand new to a club that was uh, in disarray. I, I knew it was in disarray when I walked in there, so it was, it was no surprise to me. Um, but once I got in there, and you know, after a couple months of trying to get to know the staff, it always takes a couple months to get to know everyone, I was struggling to get this team together of about 75 to kind of rise up is, is the way I like to, to term it. Like I needed, I needed to find some people within my crew that I knew would rise up. And I'm like, how am I going to do this? You know, how do, how do I find those people? And I started out by sitting down at my desk. I made a, a list. I, I wrote everybody's name down on the list. And I started looking at each individual name, thinking about the person and kind of started putting them in categories. You know, at first it wasn't really winners versus warriors. So it's a, a term that I coined a little bit later on. I started putting them into categories, trying to figure out, all right, who do I think out of this list of 75, do I think that I can get them to rise up, go the extra mile, uh, do a little bit more when they're asked. And uh, I kept re revisiting that list. And, I, and I'd kind of look at a, at a couple names that I thought, you know what, I think these three people, I can get them to do that. And then I'd focus on them. And then when I kind of thought that I could push them into the other category, I'd go back to the list and I'd, I'd look at another one or two people and be like, all right, that's my new goal. I'm going to see if I can get these guys to kind of rise up into the, into the other list. And then eventually I started just naming it the, the two columns winners because, you know, they are good people. They are good employees and I wanted them there. It's just, I was struggling to get more out of them. You know, they'd come in, they would do their job and they, and they'd leave. And, you know, in some cases they had to leave. Maybe they had kids to take care that they had to pick up, or maybe they were running to another job. I knew that I, I couldn't always get more out of them because of other circumstances. But then I started looking at this other list and I'm like, wow, these people, you know, when I started, if we have a lot of events at our club and when I would ask these people, Hey, do you think you could come? Do you think you could come on a Friday night? I really like for you to be there and mingle with the members. They were like, yeah, sure. You know, absolutely. You know, if I needed somebody to cover a class and stay a little bit extra, maybe for 10 minutes, you know, if an instructor was going to be late, they'd be like, sure, no problem. Absolutely. Whatever you need. And I just started separating them out. I started with the name, hey, these guys are winners, but these guys are my warriors. And I don't think that you can really put a, to answer your question, a percentage, like, hey, it should be 50-50, you know, or it should be 75% of your staff. I think that's going to be personal. And I think you just need to keep combing your winner list to make sure you're not missing a warrior that could be hiding in that list and you just got to peel the layers a little bit and eventually pull them over on to the other column. Yeah that was a great explanation Dorian. I have to ask you so when you 
uh, when you refer to this concept within your team internally, am I correct to assume that this is just something that you do as the team leader? It's not that your any of your team necessarily know um, that you know you would classify them as a warrior or a winner. This is just something that you do for yourself personally. Am I correct in saying that? That's very correct. Nobody, if you came now, Chantel, and went to my staff and be like, hey, are you a winner or a warrior? <laughs> um, unless they're listening to this, um, they, they have they have no idea that concept. That is my way of kind of combing through my staff, seeing who I have on and knowing who they can be my right-hand man when I need somebody. So yes, they have no idea. This is, this is personal. This, you know, my list isn't laying out. I don't call anybody a winner or you're, Hey, you're a warrior. And you know what? I, I, I can sometimes these winners, just because you're a winner for the first six months, like I do this about twice a year, doesn't mean you can't shift over to a warrior, definitely can push over into the warrior. So once I label you a winner, you're not always necessarily a winner. I, my goal is to, hey, I'd love to be, have everybody a warrior, but it's just not the way that it, that it is. Dory, let's talk about ways in which we can actually connect with our team. Can you talk us through three different ways of actually connecting with our team members? Absolutely. And this is something that took me a little while to learn. And I think the biggest thing that I I had to first learn was that not everybody wants to connect the way that I like to connect. You know, I'm a very outgoing person. I don't mind standing up in front of people. You know, I don't mind taking uh, and leading a group. And it took me a while to figure out that not everybody's like that. So by me, first of all, praise for me is one. Not everybody likes to be praised in, fr- in front of their peers or in front of the staff or um, in front of their class or in front of members. So I had to figure out other ways to get the team to connect other than praising people. Now, I have a lot of instructors, obviously, you know, Group X instructors, they're, they're, they like to be up on the stage, most of them, but not everybody does. And um, praise is one, one aspect that I use to connect the team. But I also use a lot of old fashioned, call me old fashioned, but a lot of handwritten notes. I do a lot of, um, I buy bulk in thank you cards or inspirational cards. And I, I leave a lot of handwritten notes, uh, mostly card, should I say, um, on in places that I know that they're going to find it. I, I like to make it fun. I don't like to just go up and, and hand it to and be like, here you go. Um, I, I, again, I'm kind of that fun personality. I like to play games, all that good stuff. So I like to kind of make it a fun, hey, find me. And what I'll do sometimes is I'll attach it to their paycheck. I'll leave it in on the sound system if I know they're going to go in and teach. Our staff signs in at a, at a specific computer. Sometimes I tape it to the computer and I put their name and, you know, Sharpie so that they see it. And um, I have found that that has really helped me connect with my team. And then lastly, there's just some team members. They don't need a lot of praise. The, they appreciate the handwritten note. But but the biggest way I can connect with them sometimes is quietly, uh, you know, pat on the back, uh, let them know quietly that they're doing a great job. Um, I appreciate everything that they, they do for the staff. And it's more of a quiet one-on-one, look them in the eye and just let them know that they're appreciated. And I feel as if those three concepts have really worked well for me in getting the entire team to connect. Yeah, there are three great ways. And I love the one that you mentioned in regards to that handwritten note, because I think it just happens very rarely these days, not just within our team environment, just in general, you know, Mm -hmm. how often do we actually take that time to write a thank you note, uh, give it to someone or send it in the post. And I think the fact that it doesn't happen often these days makes it that extra bit special when someone actually receives it from you that you've taken that time. And Dory, I believe that you've got one little, a, a bonus one, a little secret. Yes. <laughs> Can you share that, that bonus one with us? Right. You can't see me, but I'm rubbing my hands together like, Ooh, my little secret. Um, again, 
things that I have learned along my journey of being a team leader. And again, it's taken me a long time to figure it out. I've read a lot. I've listened to a lot. I've done a lot of experimenting. But kind of my secret weapon that I've just recently, this is kind of my newer secret weapon, and that is getting the staff outside of what I call the four walls or getting them outside of the building. And I love to do this. It's kind of like how I love to leave my little handwritten notes or my Hallmark cards uh, around the club. But um, I love to get the staff outside of the building. Um, I do a lot of quick little lunches. It doesn't have to be some big long event. Um, I'll only take a couple at a time. Um, It's almost because I want them to feel as if they have my attention. Um, I don't want to take 10 people out because Chantal, you know, when you sit at a table where there's eight or 10 people, it's very hard to converse with everybody there. So I've learned that I'll, I'll do three or four max and it's just quick lunch, get out. And I try to ask them questions about them, you know, about their families, uh, maybe a new certification. Um, Sometimes we laugh about some inside jokes within the club. But for me, it's just time to look them in the eye and to let them know that I appreciate them. I appreciate everything that they do. I appreciate that they're loyal. And I love to get them outside the building. Sometimes I do a happy hour. Uh, when it's a happy hour, I will invite a larger amount of the staff, but I never invite everybody at the same time. It's usually little groups. And then sometimes it's the yoga group, you know, sometimes it's Les Mills group. Sometimes it's my quote unquote warriors. And they just don't realize that I've invited the warriors <laughs> to go out to lunch. So I just feel that I'm different when I'm outside of the building. I feel like they're different when they're outside of the building we can all relax. I feel food relaxes people. I think it changes people. I think it changes the conversation. And it's been a real winner for me. Again, Chantel, my staff doesn't know that I take them out to lunch for these reasons. I don't, I don't say, hey, I want to take you out to lunch. So, you know, for this, this, and this reason, I just take them out. We have a nice time and it has really, really paid off for me. Absolutely. So, Dory, we finish off our shows with Fit Inspiration, as you know, and today I would love you to share with us three actions that a manager can do to immediately improve employee engagement within their business. All right. First thing I'm going to say is your staff needs to know you care about them. Take the time to learn a little something about them and let them know that you care about them, genuinely care about them. Second of all, Figure out who your winners and your warriors are. Sit down, get a, you know, again, I'm a little bit old fashioned. I still like that number two Sharpie pencil and the legal pad of paper, <laughs> but whether it's on your computer and as an Excel spread, an Excel spreadsheet, or is it's a pen and paper, write all your employees down and start seeing if you can figure out who your winners are and then, you know, who you can push over into your war- warriors category. And then lastly, I think it's so, so important to take the time again to figure out how your staff likes to be recognized. Recognize, 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 but figure out how they like to be recognized. And and by doing these little things, putting them in the winners and warriors categories, getting outside of the building um, for a quick lunch or a Starbucks, say, hey, come on, I'll buy you a coffee. Let's go. Even if it's one-on-one or you grab two people as you're out the door and don't take the coffee to go, stay there and drink it. But it's a great time to figure out how they like to be recognized. And um, and do it. You just have to do it. You have to take out of your time. It's time out of your day to, to do that. A big thank you to Dory for joining us on the show this week. As I was editing this week's episode, it reminded me of all the great shows that we've done on team leadership, on connection and engagement. So for those of you who are particularly interested in that topic, here are a few other episodes that you might like to take a listen to. Episode 122, which featured Shannon Fable on how to grow, lead, and inspire your group fitness team. Episode 118, which featured Bedros Kulian on fitness business marketing, leadership, and team building. Episode 107, featuring Justin Tamsett on the three C's to building a winning team. Episode 100 with Todd Durkin, 
empower your team for outstanding results. And I've got to say one of my all-time favorites, episode 83, featuring Michelle Bowden, using presentation and communication skills to connect with your clients, your members, and your teams. To listen to any of those episodes, just go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and I've added all of those links in today's show notes. We'd like to thank our sponsor, One Fit Stop, for their support, and we highly recommend all fitness professionals go to onefitstop.com to find out how their software will enable you to take control of day-to-day management in your fitness business. One Fit Stop's scheduling, client management, programming, and payment collection tools will set your business up for success. Precore Quick Fire 5. This week's Precore Quick Quickfire 5 guest is an internationally acclaimed keynote speaker, strategy consultant, author, and college educator, Mark Schaefer. Mark, a super warm welcome. I am absolutely thrilled that you have said yes to joining us on the show once again. I am honored. I have literally been waiting for this all week long. I just <laughs> couldn't wait to reconnect with my friend from Australia. Oh, I feel exactly the same way. So we're going to roll straight into today's interview with the Precore Quick Fire Five. And for anyone that doesn't already know you, tell us why do you do what you do? I'm a teacher in my heart. Uh, it's just I get really rewarded by when people connect with me. When my daughter was a little girl, I was helping her with her homework. She said, Daddy, you explain this so well. I don't understand it when my teachers tell me you should be a teacher someday. (laughs) So I I, I can explain things well. That's why I do what I do. (laughs) You do a phenomenal job of that as well. And tell us, Mark, are there any rituals that help you become better at what you do? I think to maintain sort of the busy lifestyle I have, it requires a lot of discipline, especially when it comes to creating content. So my discipline, my routine or ritual is to always be looking at the world in terms of how can this be a story or a lesson that I can pass on to people through my blog, my podcast, or my books. That's an amazing way to look at things. And are there any apps or systems that you use to stay in control of your workload? You know, an app that I use almost every day is is Evernote. It's a great way to keep my ideas organized because I am on the go all the time. And if I don't record my ideas and sort of organize them in some way, they're going to get lost. So Evernote is a quick and easy way to do that. That is a fabulous recommendation and a very popular one, I have to tell you. Now, oh, good. Yeah. Now, when I ask you this next question, you are so welcome to tell everyone about your books and your, and your blog. So what's a book, a podcast, or a blog, or all three that you would recommend and why? Well, I feel like I need to recommend someone else's work. You know, probably my favorite business book is called Innovation and Entrepreneurship by Peter Drucker. Um, Peter Drucker was a, he's a very famous American author and management consultant, probably the most famous in history. And I got to study under him when I was in graduate school. And this book was written in the 80s, but he predicted sort of the gig economy that we have today. It's It's a remarkable book. And I think any benefit, any business could benefit from reading it. Excellent recommendation, Mark. Thank you so much. Now, I have recently had the pleasure of reading your latest book, Marketing Rebellion. So could you give us just a little bit of an insight into what we're going to be focusing on during your main interview? Well, we're going to be talking about a wake-up call. Um, There's a lot of new research out there that indicates that customers aren't really where we thought they were and that a lot of our marketing isn't working the way it used to. In fact, the customers are in control. The customers are the marketers today, and that's the main theme of the book. Well, I am so thrilled that you've agreed to join us back on the show, Mark, and I cannot wait to get stuck into your main interview. So thank you for joining us today for the Pre-Call Quick Fire Five. Thank you. Thank you for joining me for this week's show. A quick reminder that all of the resources and the links for today's episode can all be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. 
As a listener of the show, you have a special opportunity to work with JT and you can get one free session when you buy one coaching session. No matter where you are in the world, technology allows him to connect with you. So go to activemgmt.com.au forward slash FBP family and work with JT to get more people moving and moving more often. Once again, that's one free session when you buy one coaching session and it is exclusive for you. Go to www.activemgmt.com.au forward slash FBP family. Thank you all so much for joining me for today's episode. Remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into lives of others.